Hey, we have a super nice crew with us today. It is the um, 31st of July, 2023. And this is UX Research Call number 23. Um, sorry, actually number 24, not number 23. And um, on this call, we have a, a group of people who we've been all working really collaboratively in Discord. And um, we've kicked off one of the first research um, how could you say, um, tasks on the Geezer Fund website, and that is the heuristics analysis. So yeah, um, these calls are very open, you know, like guys, please feel free to talk when and if. Um, I'd actually like to hand the floor over to each of you at some point so that you can actually share your work. Um, but just to give a little bit of intro to those who um, are new to this call, um, I'll share my screen very quickly. Um, let me just pull up the um, pull up the Jitsi file. So the heuristics analysis is essentially um, just um, looking at the UX of um, a website and or an application and just going through that using ten checkpoints. So um, all of us here on this call, we each took some time to um, to go through the Geezer Fund website which is a crowdfunding website for, for Bitcoin um, projects. And I'm just pulling up the Figma file that we all used here, which is this one here. Um, and I'll just say, this is the tab, this is the, um, the file that we used. Um, for those of you who are just jumping on the call, I'll also go ahead and, hey, Yashraj, nice to have you here. Um, this is the, um, this is the process, um, that we used. So, uh, yeah. So thanks for everyone for, uh, for joining in and for your time and your effort in contributing to this. How was it for you? Um, just wanting to just, you know, you know, go around the room and just ask, uh, how was it for you doing this heuristics analysis? Was it your first time? Um, how did you find it? Yeah. I'll hand it over to to pleb poet and uh, you can pass the ball to the next person who you think should okay that. yeah yeah uh yes this was my first time um so i definitely feel like i learned a lot and got a feel for um what a type of analysis like this is going to require looking at a website um i'm kind of thankful that it was looking at a website rather than an app i sort of feel like an app could have been like a little bit more complicated. So I feel like this was a good first thing to look at. Um, so what I did, I had a separate Figma file that I was working in. And I just <clears throat> um, guys are supplied a couple user stories, well, quite a few user stories. And reading those gave you a sense of like, what was the path that you're going to go to the website and try to perform and what would happen when you did that. Um, so I got through a few kind of like the basic, um, a new user to Geyser, what would they see and what would point them to information about Geyser and what would their act first actions be when they got to Geyser. And I just made a few notes. Um, really, I just kind of feel like I scratched at the surface um, with it being my first time. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't come up with like anything that I would say, you should change this just because I don't necessarily feel like I have <laughs> the knowledge or expertise to say what's right and what's wrong. Um, but I like Geyser, I've used it. Um, I've used it to perform the actions that I was analyzing and I didn't have any problems as a new user when I actually did do that. So I think it went well overall. Um, and I think my good sir, fellow Jitster would like to go. Who is that, is that me? Yeah. That's what your name is. <laughs> oh, sorry. My uh, my name is Joaquin, and um, let's see. This is my first time doing a project like that. I mean, I've analyzed web pages before. I'm actually in the UX boot camp right now, so we've done a little work uh, before. Um, and from my previous job, I'm used to kind of analyzing things and trying to give constructive feedback um so 
uh, from the beginning real quick, I, you know, I was talking to Mo and she gave us the Figma file and then on Discord, uh, some somebody from Geyser had given us kind of like the user stories. So it was actually a little bit hard for me to get my bearing as far as what was going on, um, as far as like, and then Christoph uh, from the Bitcoin design community kind of, when I saw that, his Figma fa page, I was like, oh, okay, so that's kind of what we're going to do. And I think there's a little back and forth between um, one of the, the guys that set up the user stories and, no and on Notion. And I like Notion. Uh, I still haven't been able to kind of incorporate the what I did in the Figma into Notion. Just I want to make, I was hoping uh, that would be a little bit clearer in this call. Um, but it, overall, as far as the analysis of the web page goes, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Jenna. Is that your name, Jenna? Uh, that I I feel like I just scratched the surface. Really, um, I just I actually got one user story and took the some screenshots and went through that on my own. I also looked at some of the other um, notes that were on Figma and kind of tried to add some some per, my perspective on that. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to be it's as uh helpful as possible you know i mean it's only my opinion so i'm trying to explain why where my opinion comes from um and uh, the most articulate articulate way i can and you know it's um there's no right or wrong answer um it's just how you know you're you're trying to impart a different perspective uh and then hopefully i guess at some point we're going to gather all those up and kind of group them together uh, in some in some fashion probably on the notion site so but i enjoyed it overall i enjoyed it and uh you know I'd, hopefully i can do a little bit more that's it oh uh and somebody else uh the person called hazel down there i, I suppose or dammy uh whichever Hi guys, I'm totally new here. Um, I'm new in the channel and I hopped in and the meeting was happening and I just, I'm just listening and figuring out what's going on. All good Hazel, you know, that's what this, these calls are about. Um, when I joined the community, um, like a year, like, no, two years ago, I just pretty much just started hopping on calls. So you have the right attitude. So welcome. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this call is call is open to everyone, and the floor is open to everyone. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you. I work as a UX writer in the software industry. Oh, we need so many more of you. <laughs> nice to have you. Very good. Um, yeah. Sorry, you said Dami. Dami, um, fellow Jitser handed the call over, handed it over to you. All right. Um, thank you. So um, this was like my first time doing heuristic evaluation for like um, a Bitcoin platform, but I've done um, evaluations for other softwares or platforms before. So there was no much struggle. Um, I just had to go through the website so, to see if I could understand what it was all about. And it was um, not that hard to do. So um, I, I could not do so much. Um, I think one helpful thing was um, those user stories, because um, as a new, as like um, a new user, I, I, I would not be able to explore every aspect of the website without those user stories. But with user story, I was able to go through those journey and to see, okay, as a new user, as a creator, as a contributor, and I was able to like, go through a few user stories. Um, the only problem I had was um, trying to, as a creator, I I don't use um, any um, Bitcoin wallet yet, so I could not complete any transaction. So I did not do anything as regards that. But the rest, I was able to like do one or um, two um, steps for them. Yeah, so. I think it was a nice experience overall, and that's it. Thank you. And uh, Yashraj, do you want to say hi? Um, yeah, sure. 
uh, hi everyone uh, happy to see all of you uh, happy to see new new faces and uh, i'm actually pretty excited to see what's going on in the field file it's like these ux research ads are being used and yeah that makes me you know, like i love that idea so uh, i have not really done deep into the uh insights are but it seems like something that might be super super useful for people who do that um i just had a quick question because i that maybe don't have some context it's like uh, what was the objective of this of this heuristic analysis was it like something that made that we are like trying to trying to learn how to do this or was it like some is this objective or something like that yeah jenna do you want to touch on that because you've been i think you're able to you you've been involved enough to to share with uh with uh you know the purpose behind doing the heuristics analysis yeah um yes so i maybe didn't hear the question uh very clear so you said context right context for why yes uh the analysis yes okay um as far as i know geyser is hoping to make improvements um the uh is it what are the heuristics or what are what is guiding the research yeah i mean uh, so what is the intent what is the intent behind doing this analysis mm -hmm. yeah um making guys are actually let me go back to their stated i really like the mission statement that was on that notion page yeah it's very well written um sorry okay um no oh, i am on the wrong page let me see if i can share that link um yeah where oh i the user journey mapping plan so it's a user journey map um sh should i read it yeah go ahead okay geyser is partnering with bitcoin design community in order to shine a light on the importance of research for bitcoin startups as well as actually gain valuable insights the geyser can use to improve our product marketing and strengthen our vision um so it's looking forward into the future and seeing if there are things that geyser website maybe isn't currently addressing maybe a user that geyser isn't currently serving um that they could in a different way or a better way and i also like the um the strengthening our vision um because Geyser is looking to stick around and be useful and valuable to Bitcoin projects. So I think that's pretty important. Um for those of you who are new to the call, I'm going to go ahead and send over the link to the website that we did the Thank you for sharing that uh, Jenna. So this is the website that we did the analysis on. Um Brendan, you've also just jumped on. Do you want to give a say a quick hi? Yes sure. Uh, hi everyone. Brendan from Uganda. Very new to Bitcoin design but uh, was really interested that Gaza wants to to do a user mapping journey and I'm very familiar with Gaza because <clears throat> I managed to raise some funds using that as I was going to BTC Prague so I thought what a way to give back by contributing to the betterment of the platform. I'm excited to be here. I'm sorry I I uh, had first download the app and everything so it took a while but I I have a few things on my mind as you guide 
we will see how to get them in there. Super nice. I think we did we meet at BTC Prague possibly. Um, we were at the um, there was a stand, a wallet stand, and I remember you walking up and sharing your story. It could have been someone else. Green wallet. Do you? You we were at Blockstream's stand. Yes. Yes, I was at Blockstream. We met very briefly. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, I remember you. Nice to have you here. Yeah, I uh, when I saw the call from guys, I was I was very interested for that particular reason because it contributed a lot to my being in Prague. A lot of things I learned, a lot of things I think that can be simplified further. So I said, why not? Very good. All right, let's dive in. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen um, with regards to the. This is the Figma file that um, we all used. Um, is, my, is my screen visible? Yeah. Cool. I'll also go ahead and share this link as well. So, you know, you're free to hop in. Um, let me just pop this in here, paste. All right. So this is the Figma file that all of us used. And we each independently conducted our own, um, you know, we can call it best best practices checkpoints. And also, I just wanted to mention to fellow Jitser, I'm sorry, I, for, I forget your name. Could you remind me? Oh, Joaquin. 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 Joaquin, I'm going to write it down. Joaquin. Joaquin, when I was also studying um, UX design, the way that I learned was pretty much by just jumping in, getting involved on real life projects. So I think that you really have the good approach down because you're basically getting hands-on experience and you're studying at the same time. So yeah. well done. You're, you have the right approach. Um, so this is the Figma file that we, that we uh, used. Um, pretty much um, we laid out um, three steps. So we said, decide on which user story you'd like to test. So um, Geezer Fund provided us with these user stories. And then they also asked us to say, Hey, if you find any new user stories, please let us know. Um, the second thing would be you would click through the um, UI, make some notes, make some screenshots, um, and just try to see, try to perform the test on the, the website. I think this was a very interesting exercise because, you know, um, user fund provided the user stories. And as Joaquin said, without those user stories, it we wouldn't have been able to um, do the analysis as well as we did because otherwise you're kind of clicking around um, with not much direction. But when you have the user story, you have like a goal that you want to achieve and you can click around trying to follow that end goal. So one of the end goals would be as a new user, I want to know more about Geezer. So you pretty much go onto the Geezer website and pretend you're a new user and click around and follow that um, user story. So we pretty much did this, and then we used these heuristics cards. Um, you know, I've made these cards for the first time before. Um, there's definitely room for improvement, so I'm definitely open from learning from you guys on how I can improve this or make this better. So, um, you know, feel free to share that with me during the call, after the call. Um, I also learned um, some ways on how to improve it as I used it myself because, um, you know, um, when you use something, only then do you know if it actually works properly or if it doesn't. So I definitely discovered some things in these user cards that could be, um, could be improved. But uh, yeah, each of us went through that. And um, I'll just, you know, I'll give you, hand the floor over to... Um, So I'll hand the floor, floor over to, to each of you if you want to um, share work. And Hazel, I know that you've not done the analysis yourself, but we there is such a big need of um, copywriting um, UX writers in this space. So it's an absolute pleasure to come across you. So feel free to, to chime in or ask any questions as you go as we go along. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, would anyone like to start? Who would like to start um, with presenting their work? Jenna, Joaquin? Uh, I'll, I'll start. But I, um, if, Mo, if you could pull up my page, because I'm, 
I'm on a iPad, so I can't share my screen. Is it possible you could pull up my, um, my page on Figma? Yeah, I'm going to have to then access Figma desktop. Let me just go ahead and access it here. Oh, sorry to make it more complicated. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, um, let me see if I can. Here it is here. And then I'll see if I can find your tab. So let's see here. Um, oh, it's not this one, it's this one. So yeah, Joaquin Workspace and Share. Let's see, is this going to, let me see if I can share the screen over here instead. So, all right. So. I I don't see it, but you know what? I, it's not it's not greatly important. I think it's really just uh, a couple pages. I can probably just talk through it. Um, yeah. Uh, well, basically, I chose the user story for um, a, a few one down. As a user, I want to discover. Oh, here we go. Yeah uh as a user it's over yeah as a user i want to discover trending projects i just picked that one what's that uh oh great thank you very much yeah sure um so um i i, I wasn't familiar with uh geyser before and so this is a new experience for me. I have used uh, Kickstarter in the past, so I, you know I can compare it to that a little bit. Uh, as a new user uh, looking for trending projects, actually, <clears throat> I saw on the screen, uh, you know, it says trending projects in, let's see, Bitcoin education, Bitcoin culture, uh, <clears throat> down here, um, and uh i just made the note that it you know that they they broke down trending products by categories and you know i as a new user i'm not so sure what the different categories entail like the difference between bitcoin culture and what the what the one is below bitcoin community i, I feel like those differences are kind of nebulous to me and so i made a note about that now if you go back up uh, to the right hand side, uh, the project leaderboard, it took me a little bit of time to find the project leaderboard. Uh, just so that was my note really that maybe the project leaderboard should be incorporated more priority in the in the in the main page. And even when you do click on a um, if you go to the left just a little bit, even if you do click on like say Bitcoin culture, uh, the page it takes you to Bitcoin culture is only like a little tag at the top. So it's not it's not presented in a very um, um, impactful way once you do click through. And I, and as far as the transparency of wh what, how the rating, you know, what, how they're trending, I don't know if that's important in this or not, but the, but the trend, uh, the transparency between how they're, they're trending is, isn't, um, isn't presented as to a new user. So those are, those are kind of my comments. You know, I may, maybe I think move the leaderboard, uh make give that more priority on the, on the landing page and if you want to break it down into categories give that kind of uh less priority so and i hope that was helpful and yeah, i that is a good yeah. question um the leaderboard is is presented as like who collects who has collected the most funding is that the uh metric I'm not sure. Okay, that's what I you're saying. It, it, it must be. It must be. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily. And again, you know that transparency. Maybe they don't want that on there because it opens up a can of worms. So maybe they don't want yeah. that on there. So it's a. You know, that's a question for Geyser. But it's just something that I wanted to point out. Or perhaps it is um, the number of contributors, the number of uh, people funding it, because. Because when you're looking at one particular fund, like on that funds page, it usually gives you that metric there, like how many people are contributing. So right. that seems to be an important one. All right. 
Uh, regardless of the metric, I think that maybe uh, I, I would like to see personally from a personal view, I, without category trending, you know, just have, you know, because, you know, they have the feature product and then below that they could have the the, the products that are kind of hot, you know, trending hot at the moment without breaking them down into categories because the categories kind of dilutes the hotness, especially if you don't know what the category, what the definition of the category. I did. Well, I, you know, I added them on Figma, but now I, I, I need to add them on um, Notion. So I will do that. Yes. Yes, that's me. I can go. Um, my Figma file is in a different place, but I can share my screen, I believe. Okay, let me... Okay. So Happy to do that. Um, can someone give me some direction? I have chosen to share a window. Uh, then I'm not sure which how to select which window to share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, but now that I have selected it, I cannot deselect it. I don't have the option anymore. Oh, yes, I did link. Yes, in the Discord. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I was also looking at the new user path. Um, the new user wanting more information. Sorry, a train's passing me right now. I don't see it. Okay. Yeah, this is where we're at. Yeah. 
Um, so if you see, um, one of the first things that you, I think, came from you, Mo, before the cards, um, up above this, you had this, the Jacob's 10 usability heuristics. Um, yeah. So I imported that, and then I kind of used that as a guide. But the same concepts were in the cards. Um, but anyway, I was sort of looking at it that way. Um, so yes, looking at um, if I'm a new user and I'm coming to get information, uh, rather than pulling the full uh, screenshot of the website at once, I kind of took snippets and said, this is what I'm looking at, kind of to like focus the attention on one thing. So firstly, um, if I'm a new user and I'm coming to the website for the first time, this uh, let the stats flow play a part in world changing ideas. Um, and then the ticker that's kind of showing you um, different data points about, um, yeah, statistics and things and project funding and contributors. Um, I, I like that that is a primary thing that I'm seeing that gives a lot of information and context and also tells me um, there's other people here, there's action happening here, um, there's something I can do here. There's sort of a call to action in that. Um, I also think that uh, something that I did was also start to do some comparison to like GoFundMe in particular. Uh, and you can find a few notes that I have in this Figma file, but that's not important right now. But one thing about like those other websites that I was sort of comparing to, yeah, over here, was just, um, I think this uh, first thing that you see when you arrive on the page, um, on other websites, they're maybe more like embellished and like illustrated and kind of like take up more space. I think that that is something that Geyser can do. Um, it would definitely change the layout of the page and kind of change like where your attention goes first. But thinking about the new user who's coming and showing up first, um, I think kind of like blowing up these stats um, and maybe embellishing it a little bit um, could improve that particular path, um, but I don't know if that is priority or not. So that's just one note I had. Um, and then uh, also when you arrive, you see um, to the left side, um, all the filters that you can use. And I think the filters sort of tell you a little bit about what you're gonna find um, projects wise on this page. You're gonna find things that have to do with community and culture, but I do agree with you, Joaquin, like those differences maybe aren't super clear, but you're also gonna find about um, education. Um, there could be more filters perhaps, uh, that may be something to ask about. Um, and then uh, I could click on subscribe and maybe I didn't really know what, what was gonna happen when I clicked on subscribe. So I tried it out and then this window popped up um, and I liked that. It didn't take up the whole screen. It was small and it told me exactly what subscribe was gonna do. So that was an action that I knew I could take. Um, and if I am a new user who's looking for information, that would be exactly what I would wanna do is subscribe for updates. So um, then the next thing was just looking at um, the projects which are central to the page. So right now it seems to be that like, if you're showing up on the page, that is priority. Um, that's what you want to see first. Um, you kind of want to see what's here, who's doing things, what the projects are about, and you get a pretty good overview of just a bunch of information about that. Um, I wasn't looking at it on dark mode, but I feel like that is my preference for dark mode, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then uh, also, if I'm looking for information, I would go to the tabs. So I just took a small screenshot of like what the tabs were. Um, which was grants about launch your project and log in. But that actually might be um, updated since I took the screenshot. I actually think they might have changed one of those or added something um, since then. Uh, but um, keeping to the new user path, I, I would be drawn to the about page. And there is a lot of information there. I didn't. Um, take any screenshots or make any notes on that page, but I would have done that next, uh, keeping going in that user path. Um, and then I also sort of looked at, um, if I'm a new user, then I'm gonna make a donation. Um, and this kind of 
this was like what I did as a new user. So I was kind of copying like my actual, like I didn't have to pretend so much because I, I donated to this one pretty recently. Um, and it was my first time using Geyser. So, um, I guess just one note maybe having from this was, um, I really like the experience of using Albi. Um, so I have a few screenshots there below. That is, if you were to use Albi in the browser as your wallet, what you would see. But if not, you would see the QR code. Um, so maybe the note is just like, how is there? Is it clear um, if your if your transaction is done versus not being done? Like, do you know the states very well? Do you know the status? Yeah, that's my note. And um, I also maybe wonder if um if albi is something that's like advanced for a new user or not because it does require its own initial setup with albi elsewhere but if you already have that i think it is an amazing experience something that i wish i could do across the web everywhere is just have my wallet browser um so i love that and i wonder if it is encouraged or not of a new user and I think that's about it. I didn't have much here, except that I did like, um, yeah, um, I can tell which of my filters are active uh, by this little um, red X that appears once I scroll over it. So that was something that I, that was an interaction as I was on the page. Um, and then I also sort of liked um, if I inspected the filters a little bit more, they popped up and they kind of did the like, the glass styling around it, um, the frosted glass. So uh, you had the pop-up come out and then um, everything behind it kind of faded so you could tell what you were looking at and read it more clearly. Um, so I, I liked that. And yeah, that's about it for me. Yes, I think, um, let me try to share my screen. Um, okay. Uh, one sec. All right. So can we see my screen? Yes. Um, so what I did was I took each stories and, and I took screenshots of how I went through um, the journey I, I went through for each of the story. Um, so say I want to learn, this story says I want to know more about Liza. So um, I just took screenshots of me going through, um, going through the website. But one thing I find I find interesting was on the landing page, there is nothing really that tells you about Geyser. So for a new user, they had to toggle down to the about page. So this is the about page. Um, so it's it's the about page has like um, information as to how as to how, um, what guys are all about. But something funny or something that I noticed on like other platform, I think on like um, GoFundMe, um, GoFundMe has like a three step process on how, how GoFundMe works. Step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. But for guys, uh, there's nothing like that. There's nothing, there's no, guide as to how it works so um i didn't know that down when i was making when i was um designing this but when i went to go for me that i noticed oh this is not on geyser but um the next one is um as a user i want to make a donation on geyser so like i said before i just take screenshots based on how i would um go through um the websites and 
I take the cards that we've designed that you've shared with us and um and I put my notes on that. So um one thing um the, the first issue that I, I realized is when making a donation is there's no visibility of system status. So I was apprehensive at some point, given um I don't know if uh, how many steps they had to make a donation. I just kept I know the, I, I I know there's a continue button. But I could not tell if I was at the um, last page of giving a donation. So um, if you go through this, so I click on contribute here. Yeah, I click on contribute, and I get donate this amount. But nowhere on this screen can I see oh step one of three or step two or a, a flow that shows me okay you're almost done or I'm halfway done or something like that. Nothing, nothing as to that. And um, um, match with match the real world. Um, does the design use words that users are familiar with? I said no. Um, with other crowdfunding sites, users can see how much has been donated and how much more is needed. Guys, that does not have that tracker. So I I I I, I use this as like a comparison. So um, for GoFundMe, I can see clearly that. Um, so, so amount has been raised of this goal, but for guys that there is nothing like that, although they have milestones, um, but for projects with no milestones, it seems like, um, I can't tell if it's just like an open-ended open um, contribution with no ending. So that's something that um, guys that does not have. Uh, I think that's, that's all for, that's all for, making a donation. Um, as a user, I want to find a specific project. So I did the same thing. I went through finding a project using the filters and all. Recognition, I think there was a problem with recognition. Um, so let's say that I have, I, I know the name of a project or I'm trying to remember the name of a project and I type like two letters yeah, um, Gaza does not provide um, prompts or does not provide suggestions, likely suggestions of the names of those projects. So it requires that I know the name of the project, the full name of the project, or I know the category where the project falls under. So um, yes, and and um, for help and documentation, there's no chance for users to get help when searching for a specific project basically there's no there's no way to get help and the only place where there seems to be help is when making a contribution there, there's a telegram button that that you can you can access you can click on when when you're trying to make a contribution in case there's a problem i think that's like the only two issues i had with this yeah, Misa story for the next one, I, I don't think there's any, as a user, I want to discover trending projects. I did not have any issue with, with, with that. I think it all went well. Um, as a contributor, I want to purchase a reward item on Geyser. Um, only one, only one issue here, and which I said, there's no clear, um, there's no clear visibility of system status, say, how many steps are involved when trying to make a purchase? It's it's um it's not given, so it made me apprehensive a little bit while trying to do that. So I will just keep to, I'll just go straight to the ones that I had issues with. Yes, this as a contributor, I want to see the updates of a project I found I I funded. So I noticed, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but I noticed that um, there's this activity tab here that, um, that, that gives you a notification when you follow a project. Um, it gives you updates, but, um, but unlike other, but unlike um, normal real world applications, where you, when you have notification, it comes with numbers. It tells you you have three notifications, you have 10 notifications. Guys, that does not give you that. It just puts that red dot there to inform you that oh, there's something new. There's something new here, and I guess that's all from my end. That's all I was able to do. Yeah. 
Thank you. I would. Well, right off the bat, while you were presenting, and by the way, great job, everyone. Very good analysis. I was looking at the site right now during the call, and I noticed that we don't have a site map at the bottom. That when someone enters that, OK, I, I don't want to see too much information. I want to go straight to a, an FAQ sesh, section or a careers page. How can I? put my property on before we go to the point. Uh, another thing that I want to do is to study uh, what are the opportunities of indexing that we have that I need to go deeper on what what are we presenting in the project and as far as content. One thing that would be interesting is it on Uh, one thing that will be interesting, I don't know if, if it's already a feature, will be a blog section where people who put their projects on can give updates on what are, what's going on. And if I funded a specific project, I can sub, uh, subscribe to posts in the blog specifically about that project. So I receive straight in my email, how are things progressing, if, if, I, wanna, if I can, of course, donate more and that kind of stuff. Um, I think that's that's it. That's what I've seen so far that I would start working on. It, it's so exciting. It's so nice. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being so receptive. This was incredible. Yeah, so being the first, I'd not prepared, so I'll not share my screen, but I'll just highlight on some of the things that I personally faced. And I think a new user would face the same challenges because I was at that point. Uh, the first is when, when you've created a geyser fund and you've followed like a project, I wish there was a place where I can just go and click and see only the projects I follow, which I think has been hinted on just now because you don't want everything that is going on to distract me i'm focused on those projects i want to track their progress and instead of uh, i'd suggest where we have the funded on each of the like the boxes that represent a, a particular project where we have the 30 million the, the different amounts of sats raised if that was a bar in the case of a project that has uh, a capped target, whereby someone would open the website and immediately know the progress of a certain project regards their, their raising of money, like where we have the trending. So I've just opened the, the Gazer fund briefly. So trending right now, we have case for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Matatu, and the largest Bitcoin meetup. 
So if Fatola was able to look at them instantly and see a bar, ideally um, something that represents how much along the way they have reached to their target, something like uh, a bar with different colors, the gray being what they're supposed to raise and the, the theme color of maybe the website being what they have raised, that would help a lot because, I mean, the project that is about to raise money to raise all it needs would be faster for me to donate to because that means they can achieve their cause faster. And then there's also one thing I, I noticed as I was uh, using it previously. The website is much easier to use than the phone for some reason. And most of the new users, including myself, we were trying a lot to use the phone. So when you get to the phone, <clears throat> and you're trying to do things like editing, uh, adding details about the project. There's a bit of, I wouldn't describe it to the granular detail because I didn't prepare, but I remember having to run to my PC every time I wanted to update something because the phone interface was a bit unfavorable because uh, I, I only get bits of the editing part. It's not like a scrollable kind of, I fill in all the details. So I have like side tabs that go to the side. I have to, um, there's a particular place. I remember the time I was supposed to close the project. It was hard for me to find that one button that turns off the project. I'm just remembering them off head. I'm very certain I will organize them and I'll share, I'll share them. But I thought since we're all on the call, I'll just give them to you. Then I had someone mention the uh, the Bitcoin idea, removing Bitcoin on the project tags, that's very important. There's a lot of word Bitcoin going on in the website. It's, it's <laughs> It gets, I know we like Bitcoin, but it gets too much. Then, Yeah, I just want to make sure, is that the one that uh, there's already been some entered, like uh, I think Christoph's stuff has been entered, is that we all just put it in the same uh, database or spreadsheet? I'm trying it right now, but I don't see Christoph's, I see the blank. Yeah, it's hard, so to find. Be... it's hard to find, actually, that's okay. what, one of my issues, um, there's like two there's like the template, and then if you look down below that, there's like something that's already been Christoph, I think, started filling uh, out. So uh, it, it confused me as well. Um, is that... All 
Okay. Okay. I feel like there was some user convergence. Issue. Yeah. Um, let me see here. There's user stories. So that was like, um, yeah, if okay. we're looking at the page that he sent, but below that, um, and the heuristic review number four, user stories is number one. At number four, there's user issues. So if you click on user issues, that's the one that's already been started to uh, fill out. So, um, I, and I just discovered that while I was on this phone call. <clears throat> so. I feel like we had some uh, similarities and convergences on the things that we all kind of had issues with, especially for the new user. So that, that'll be good to reflect on that table, user issues table. Yeah. I'll definitely you, do that. I'll be more pre more prepared. I am, but not so. Not so. I've I've not used it that much, so I, I'll just need to devote more time to it because I think I'm in the design Discord, but not the research particularly. Let me check. I just got the notification because at some point I turned on a reminder for this call. Oh yeah, I have a, it's actually a question for you, Mo. Um, so I know the the heuristic categories that you chose, I, it was interesting that you chose them. Uh, and then uh, Merrimack or from Geyser chose the user story. So. I, was there <clears throat> the reason you chose that? Were you trying? I'm just curious about your thought process in choosing those. Was it to get a wide view or, as opposed to narrowing down the focus on specific things? Or because it was kind of like uh, Merrimack's uh, user stories were very specific, but the other, the um, heuristic categories were very broad. So it was kind of an interesting mix between the two. Like I, I was focusing on something. Um, I kind of narrowed in on something uh, away from the broader category. So I don't know if, if that was okay, or if that was, are, are we trying to get a broad sense and a specific sense or? Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you about those cards too, because you left one that you wanted to kind of direct as like Bitcoin specific. And I thought that was interesting. I wondered if anyone had any idea about what that would be. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, the, there was a card for that 
that Mo left open. Yeah, I, I remember uh, seeing it. I, I don't know what I, I'm not sure how the coincidence of that. I mean, I, I would assume it have to do something with decentralization. Um, right. Yeah, I, I thought about I like know. freedom, like freedom of, of use. Um, the user feels in control of what they're doing. Thank you.